Hi guys, Squirrel here. Welcome back to another Euro Truck video. Now, the truck and trailer I'm using today, uh, this particular truck is the, it's a Eugene mod. I think it's in the Steam Workshop. Uh, Eugene mod, it's a Volvo FH, FH 16 2012. And it has some really nice customization options. Definitely worth taking a look at it. As you can see, it's a bit of a beauty. Uh, I've hooked up with the Ikeri trailer. Now, the Ikeri trailers are also in the Steam Workshop. And uh, this is an owned trailer. It's a double. We're in uh, Sweden at the moment, in Emir, I think it is. Yes, we're in Emir uh, with a double trailer. And shortly, I'm just going to head over there and take delivery of some fuel tanks where we're going to head over to Finland. But first, just want to mention something. With Christmas coming up, you're probably thinking about new gadgets and things that you'd love to have in your life. And there's a company called BOTB that's well known for giving away dream cars every single week. Really cool cars. But they've also got a lifestyle competition that I thought you'd be interested in, where you can win gadgets like TVs, drones, iPhones, and that kind of thing. And currently, they've got a triple screen Vasario racing simulator up for grabs worth over 10 grand, and a laptop gaming bundle worth over eight grand. Really cool stuff. So if you want to get tickets, tickets cost them, I think, 15 pence to a pound, and you have to be 16 or over, but it is open to worldwide competition. Uh, I've linked my favorite prizes in the video description. Go and have a look if it's something you're interested in. Go for it. If not, that's cool. Right, let's drive over because let me just show you where we are. We're in Emir, and we're going to take uh, a journey across the ferry to Vasa, and we're heading over, I think it's to Varkhaus is where we're going. So we're going over to My Summer Car territory, and I hope you've been enjoying the My Summer Car videos that I've been putting out recently. Some pretty crazy stuff has been happening. Uh, don't forget, guys, that uh, I do stream on Twitch um, every Thursday to Sunday, uh, generally in the UK evening time. Saturday's an all-day stream. And I have been doing My Summer Car uh, as well on there, and crazy stuff has been happening. Uh, which you can catch on Squirrel Plus if you've missed it. If you want some more My Summer Car content, uh, head over to Squirrel Plus. You'll find plenty of it there. Just bear in mind that um, my YouTube series, which you see, is different. Oh, why is that not going into upshift? Okay, that's interesting. And my YouTube series is different to my Twitch series. I run a separate profile for that, so don't expect any continuity between the two. They're completely different. I don't know why my, uh, my shifter... Oh, I need to... I know what it is. I know what it is. Uh, my SKRS USB is not plugged in. I'm looking at it sitting there, hanging out, <laughs> hanging out the USB port. I need to go and plug that in in a second. First of all, how the heck are we going to get into here with a double trailer? This is going to be fun. Hmm. I don't think when they... Um, one second. Now it's not going into reverse gear. There we go. No, it's climb. There's reverse. I don't think when they put all these trailers outside here, they thought about how you might get a double into this thing. Getting out could be just as fun as well. Crikey. I think we're going to take a sign. Jeff, can you watch out there, buddy? Just, w just watch that sign for me. Let me pick this up. Let's grab that first. That's <laughs> step one done. Right, anyway, cargo market. Fuel tank, 16 tons. There we go. Emir to Varkhaus paying 34,000 euros. Uh, total journey is going to be 449 kilometers on the land. And ferry distance is 100k. On Sunday Night Trucking last week, I don't know if you've caught this on Squirrel Plus, we did a 4,500 kilometer journey. Uh, we went from, I think it was Catania in Sicily. And on Sunday night trucking alone, we drove all the way through France, the UK. We took the ferry to the Faroe Islands, headed up and ended up delivering in Iceland up here somewhere. Four and a half thousand K. Monster journey. And it's all on Squirrel Plus. Um, right. Where are we picking this thing up from? At the back there. And also, I did it without a sat nav. Yep. As you can see, the sat nav is currently disabled. So we did it entirely using what I call chat nav. Uh, which is which is basically chat decides to tell me when to turn off the highways and turn left or right. It mostly works. Sometimes it goes horribly wrong, but it mostly works. But it was great fun. That's one of the things that you can do uh, on Twitch because it's a live platform. You can do crazy things like chat nav. 
um, which which was great to watch. So yeah. Right, let's get lined up here. I think we've done the difficult bit. I think Jeff uh, does tend to spin our truck around when he loads up, if I remember. Saves us having to reverse. There we go. Right. Engine off. And uh, we'll get Jeff to load up. And then we'll, we'll, he'll spin our truck around and then we'll be on our way. There we go. Cargo is loaded. Uh, SKRS has been plugged in. And we're ready to rock and roll. Can't actually see the contents, but I'm assured it's full of fuel tanks and stuff. Um, now then, I will have to leave that sat-nav open, or we'll have to go sat-navless, because I didn't actually bother to fit the sat-nav, uh, before I, which I should have done. And I don't think there's a mechanic on the way that I can quickly go and install that thing. Out. Let's have a quick look. Or well, maybe there is over here. Oh, there is actually one around the corner there. I'd say we'll just do it with the overlay. It's fine. It doesn't matter. It's no biggie. Right, let's just check my... Yep, we can now shift up into the higher range, which is always good. And we'll get going. It's currently 10.40. It took him a couple of hours to load that thing. We just need to worry about how we're going to get out of here. Let's put the side lights on. We don't need the full lights now. Uh, what's the fueling? Oh, we've got... Okay, loads of fuel left, though. Thanks, Jeff. See you later, bro. He's not very really chatty these days, Jeff. I think he's got some relationship issues going on in his life. Doesn't tend to talk much now. Nice. Beautiful. That was easier than getting in there. Right, we should have a short journey down to the ferry. I assume the ferry is like a, it's 100k, isn't it? So I assume it's going to take like a couple of hours or something. I would have liked to have set off a little bit earlier to allow for that. So I don't really want to be driving in the dark. I mean, not that I have a problem driving in the dark. I just don't think it's as, as nice to drive in from, a, from your guys' perspective as it is in the daytime. Oh, we're on pro mod. As you've probably already gathered, I'm on pro mods uh, 2.31, <coughs> which works with 132 of Eurotruck, which is beautiful. So we're back in action with pro mods. It was out of action for, what, like a month or something? It was crazy. I have to say, the gearing on the uh, the Volvo is... Maybe I should try a different gearbox, because the gearing is very strange. Um, what tends to happen is you, you blast through the first three gears very quickly, you get to four, and the jump from four to five is quite significant. So you tend to almost always have to split it. I mean, obviously you don't see these things if you're just driving automatic. It's okay, I had actually seen you and I was waiting for you, but okay. We'll go. That's how you're going to be. I'll tell you, more recently, the AI's been doing more and more crazy things. I don't know if you've noticed this. I don't want to keep saying this, but it really is getting weirder. And aggressive in places. And I've seen the AI more recently. Like, I think it was on Sunday, on Sunday Night Trucking. I, I took delivery of a trailer. And as I drove out of the gate, there was a truck facing off against another truck so somehow the ai had managed to put one of the trucks on the wrong side of the road facing another truck which was just sat there tooting its horn and the ai had no clue what to do so it didn't fix it i had to drive off and leave it and i've never seen that before <laughs> like in your truck i've never seen the ai spawn a vehicle pointing the wrong way pretty bizarre so um as you guys are no doubt aware, the new DLC for Eurotruck is going to be the, uh, what's it called, Baltic Sea, beyond the Baltic Sea. <coughs> I don't know what the release date is, but, you know, my guess would be, what are we on now, in, towards the end of October. My guess would be November, um, and then maybe leave Christmas as paint jobs and that kind of thing. Seems to be the norm, doesn't it? I know they've currently got an event on at the moment, uh, around Germany, like a community event. Uh, I assume they're going to have something Christmassy, like a Christmas event maybe as well, which would probably run in December. So November seems like a likely candidate for a Baltic DLC map. And if you look at it now on Steam, you can see the little thing in the, you can see it in the Steam store, and it tells you um, where the Baltic Sea is going to cover. And it says in there it's Latvia, uh, Lithuania, and Estonia. Uh, but also south of Finland as well. Uh, and a few parts of Russia, like St. Petersburg. Now, St. Petersburg's a glorious city, so 
definitely looking forward to seeing that. But also, it does mean, unfortunately, yet again, there's going to be a clash with Pro Mods. Um, so inevitably, as soon as that DLC comes out, our Pro Mods is not going to work again, which is a real pain. So then we're going to have to wait until they update that. And, and this is an ongoing problem for Pro Mods, isn't it? They have to keep stripping things out every time SCS, you know, finally gets to what they've already done a long time ago. I don't really see a solution to it, unfortunately. Uh, but that's going to come out, I a guess, in November. But I will, of course, um, as soon as I'm able, I will, of course, uh, make a video. And we'll take a look at that. I expect the quality to be pretty much the same as it always is now with SCS. You know, they don't seem to deliver a map that's low quality anymore. They Everything seems to be very high standard. Uh, as we saw in Oregon. Oregon was great. I hope you you tried Oregon, because... Um, let's get down to 50. Oregon was um, was a wonderful uh, map DLC for American Truck. One of the best ones they've done, I think. Really, really enjoyed that. Drove every road in it. Which way do we go here? Uh, I don't know what that says, but I'm going to guess that's truck. What does that sign say? Trucks that way, yeah. Okay. Yep, got it right. So, yeah, I, I see no reason to think the Baltics won't be absolutely wonderful. I would like to see these cars change and move around, you know, and I'd like to see some activity at these ports. Vehicles going in. Um, I know it's going to be tricky for them, but it just feels so dead. You, know, you turn up to this place, and the port, I don't know if you've ever been to a port in your car before, but it's just a constant activity, you know, trying to get something loaded and unloaded and out there, because it's sat in the port, it's losing money. And it would be great to see a little bit more uh, movement at these things. Five hours! Oh my god. That's going to be like three in the afternoon. That's a lot longer than I thought it would be. Never mind. It's going to be a midnight delivery by the look of it. I shall have a look at the ETA now and see what it's on. Promods 2.31. Oh, crikey. It's nearly 6 p.m. Uh, expected 7 a.m. Well, it looks like we're going to be driving through the night, peeps. Sorry about that. Oh, well, we haven't done a night drive for a while. Maybe it'll be fun. Now, I've had some, um, I've had plenty of people sort of say to me, there's a couple of, I don't know if you can probably notice, there's a couple of trucking games in the mix at the moment. One of them is called, uh, what's it called? Alaskan Truck Simulator. And there's another one... Is it called Truck Driver, or Truck and Driver, or Road Trucker, or something? I can't remember the name of it now. I've seen the trailers for Alaskan Truck Sim, and I've even been given a key for the other one, the Truck Driver one, and tried it. And, and I think with that second one, I have something along the lines of 60 seconds of playtime in it. Because I chucked the key into Steam, started it up, looked with horror at what I saw, and promptly quit. Uh, that was a few months ago. I don't know, at the moment, what state it's in. But, I don't have too high an expectations for it. Uh, now, Alaskan Truck Simulator, I've seen the trailer for, but not actually tried the game. And I don't know if you've seen the trailer for it, but it's got some really weird things in it. For example, it shows you it's about a minute long. It's on Steam. You can see it on Steam. Just just look in the store for Alaskan Truck Simulator and, uh, and watch the trailer. So what happens is the camera is very cleverly edited to not really show you a great deal of the truck. It shows you rock falls. It shows you a guy changing the, the wheel on his truck. It shows you a rabbit, which you then shoot for food. So it seems like a very strange um, hybrid game of trucking and survival, which I guess is the angle they're going for with Alaskan, the Alaskan side of things. I have to say, I think I always saw the inside of the cockpit for a couple of seconds, like very briefly they showed the inside of the cockpit of the truck, and I'm not surprised that they kept it so short, because what you can see was very low resolution, which to be fair could be updated before release, or may stay the same as it is, who knows. 
Um, the outside of the truck, like, you can't see an awful lot of it, of the physics of it, but it looked very simplistic in its physics. So I, you know, currently I've got it pegged as a kind of, um, hmm. if this is a Simcade, what's a Simcade squirrel? Okay, so if you've got right at the top end of the scale, you've got simulator, like a hardcore simulator that does all the details and physically simulates everything. And then at the bottom end of the scale, you've got like an arcade, which is just fun and doesn't simulate physics and doesn't, you know. And then in between, you've got like Simcade, which is kind of what this is. You know, it's de it has detail, but it's kind of, it's deliberately kept simplistic in places so that you can have fun with it. Yeah, hence the arcade. Like we don't worry about tire wear, we don't worry about blowouts, we don't worry about truck. You know, there's lots of things that we don't worry about. The physics is okay, but it's not like amazing. Um, you can't click on any dash, any any item in the dash, so you can't call it like a full blown simulator because you know I can't click things in the cabin. I can't get out the cabin. You know, so there are many things about this game that make it a simcade. Um, Alaskan truck sim, I kind of have pegged. Similarly, but maybe more towards arcade, it, it seems to be aiming for... It seems to me to be trying to pitch itself directly at some of the things that people have asked for in Eurotruck. Namely, can I get on my truck and can I change my can I change my wheel? That's where they seem to be pitching it. And looking at what they've done, I, I've... I don't know. I'm, I'm sceptical. I'm currently sceptical, but until I try it, I can't really give you a view on it. But I'm just kind of passing on my skepticism, if you like, to say, you know, don't don't be hyped too much for what you're seeing. Like, take a look at what you're seeing and, and think for yourself, is that something I'm prepared to sort of buy into and try? Or do I want to see somebody else have a go of it first and see if it's worth spending my hard-earned cash on? Because if there's one thing I am getting more and more kind of fed up with, if I'm honest with you, is games coming out with the simulator moniker on them saying, oh, we're a simulator, and whilst the, what they're saying is not untrue, it kind of dilutes the word simulator. Um, because, like I say, it makes it more of an arcade experience than a simulator experience. Like, to me, a simulator should be as close to reality as it can get in many ways. I mean, except that it's meant to be fun. Um, but there are also simulators where you can literally train people on. You know, I've, I've seen simulators you can train pilots on. I've seen simulators you can train truck drivers on. I've seen ones you can train forklift drivers on, um, diggers on. Like, there are actual full simulators. What we get here is something approaching a consumer version of that. Yeah, it's something that's a simulator, but it's fun at the same time. But I'm kind of getting fed up with some of these simulators coming out that are not... Like, the amount of fun in them very quickly dissipates and leaves you with a, a gaming experience that just, frankly, isn't worth the money. Like, the amount of effort that's gone into it, they kind of quickly... They've gone for the quick buck approach, yeah? Like, let's throw something together, call it a simulator. By the time people realise that there's not really that much there, they'll have spent the money with us and uh, we'll be off making our next project. And that's the bit I get annoyed with. Right, are you going to cut into me, bro? Or I've got a feeling the first truck's going to move over. The second one... Yep, there he goes. If I was being really annoying, I would have pushed up on him. <laughs> and made him wait. And that's probably what the AI would have done, is just pushed up on me. Uh, so, yeah, I don't know. As soon as I can, I think what I'll do is I'll... Um, I'll show you Alaskan Truck Simulator. But for now, you know, if you're listening to this, which you obviously are, uh, I, I would say just, you know, be, be cautious for now. Be cautious about what, what's in that game and don't be hyped up by the fact that you can change a tire on a truck because I imagine it's going to be like, it's going to be like Car Mechanic Sim. You know, you're going to be just click on four nuts and boom, it's done. Uh, that was it. Oh, you, you had a tyre blowout. Yeah, okay. Well, just get out and it'll take 60 seconds to change it. That's what I think we're facing. But we'll see. And as for the other one, the truck driver one, whose name I can't remember because it was such a memorable game. Um, yeah. Again, wait and see until I can show you a video on that. Put it this way, I don't think Eurotruck has that much to worry about right now. 
whoa, 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 whoa. We're getting brake tested. Keep the pace up, Broski. What's our ETA? Friday, 1 a.m. 346 goes. Okay, that's not too bad. I can deal with that. Uh, so, on the <laughs> what's going on in my life kind of thing, on the IRL side of it, so I've just, I think I mentioned it in a video, I had a week of flu, and it, I still sound a bit nasally. It's really annoying me. And even now, I'm still coughing now and again, so I do apologize for that. Um, but it is what it is, unfortunately. Um, so, anyway, the Mice and Macar videos are back up. Uh, this is a Eurotrick video. I plan on doing a... We've got a TMCN in the pipeline. Probably going to be next week. Uh, I also think I mentioned... Uh, I think I've got some Thrustmaster stuff I want to show you. Uh, I've been in touch with... Now, I don't know if you know about the SKRS uh, situation. But you may or may know. So, I've, I've had... You may, you may remember many moons ago. Oh my god, what are you doing? You see what I mean? You see what I mean, guys? Like, what is that? What is that? Right there. That's an accident. Just, there was literally no reason to stop. I'm seeing the AI doing weird stuff right now. Anyway. Uh, SKRS, yes. So, you may remember a couple of years ago, I made a video um, about the CSIO SKRS. Uh, and I showed you, it's like a manual shifter. <laughs> it looks like a truck shifter with the with the range and splitter on it, buttons, and it sits on top of whatever manual shifter you happen to be using. So at the time, I had a Logitech G27, and I sat this thing on top, and I explained to you how to use the gears and all the rest of it. And ever since then, I've been using it. Yeah, I'm using it right now, and I've been using it on Sunday Night Trucking, and every trucking video I've made, I've been using that SKRS. It's still holding together mostly. Uh, the biggest problem uh, with it has been the company behind it, CSIO. Um, I, I haven't looked into the details of this, but from what I've heard, there were some problems with CSIO, and I think they've even stopped taking new orders now because they've not been able to deliver things to people, and some people have been getting very upset, placing orders with them, not receiving the goods, etc. Like I say, I've not got involved with that, um, but it's a sad situation for everybody concerned if that's the case. However, there's another company, a Polish company, um, who've started to make these SKRSs, and I've got in touch with them, and they're going to send me one over because I've also got the Thrustmaster wheel, one of the Thrustmaster wheels coming, and Thrustmaster do a shifter um, called the TH8A, I think it's called, which is quite a nice shifter as it happens, so you can use it for racing as well. Um, or just manual gearboxes on anything anything and everything driving wise you can use it you know you could use it in your OMC and manually shift with it if you wanted to um, but the this SKRS fits on top of that shifter as well as fitting on top of wheels like the G29 and the G920 but the problem with the G29 and the G920 from Logitech is their manual shifter to be quite honest with you is pants it's rubbish compared to what they gave away with the G27 uh, they charge extra for this shifter that is completely subpar. Uh, so what I, you know, my G27 is not going to last forever. I need to think about replacing it, and I'm also conscious that you guys, you know, want to know what can we buy. We're, you know, we're getting into trucking. I want to get a nice wheel. You know, I want to take my experience up a notch. Like, what can I use? So I'm consciously aware that you want to do that, and I want to tell you, you know, what's a good setup. So. In the next few weeks, as soon as this gear arrives, I should be able to make a video. What's going on here then? Wow, that was close. That was close. I was inches away from that cop car. I want to be able to make a video <coughs> and show you with the experiences I've had with the Logitech wheel and this new shifter. And then, you know, obviously tell you where you can get them from because that's important to you then. Yeah, you think, oh, that's an, that looks like a nice setup. I want to get one of those. And you know that you can get it. Whereas if I say to you right now, my G27, you can't buy them. They don't make them anymore. And the shifter I've got, the company's pretty much gone bust. So my current setup is of no use to you in that regard because you can't buy it. Let's get down to 50. So that's something I've got um, coming in the pipeline. 
should make a good video. Also on the flying side, I'll be doing similar things. Uh, Thrustmaster have also sent me uh, some of the pedals and yokes. Um, again, because I've got an eye on the fact that we're coming up to Christmas and uh, you guys are thinking about, you know, that's that's generally speaking when you sort of, you know, you get your new toys, don't you? You think, oh, you know, I've always wanted some rudder pedals or I've always wanted a yoke and I might try this flying thing or I might get a wheel for my trucking, you know. It's that's when it happens, is, is Christmas. <laughs> that's when you start asking for things or when you start buying yourself things as a treat, I think. So I'll try and get those videos out to you before Christmas comes up so you can make some decisions about that. Let's get back up to about 75. 236 Ks left, so I don't know. I mean, at the moment it's 20 past... Actually, I've just remembered we're on the summer thing, aren't we? So it's not so bad. I haven't got my autumn mod installed because it was causing some issues with 132, so I uninstalled it. So we're currently on the summer, which is the default um, setup for Eurotruck. Which basically means, you know, considering how far north we are here in Finland, uh, basically means that it's staying light until very, very late indeed. Because we're not that far, I don't think, from the Arctic Circle. So look at that. The sun's still very high, even at 9.30pm. Which is just crazy. I don't know if I could cope with living in a a place that was so far north, you know. I, I, I mean, the summer months sound great. They re really do, like, almost perpetual daylight, but the winter months? Ay ay ay. I mean, if it's too day too much daylight for you, you can just shut the curtains, but it, in the winter, what do you do? It's just constantly dark. It's so depressing. I don't know if I can It's not for me, anyway. Also, you notice most of the houses are all made of wood. There's so many trees in Finland. So many trees. But yeah, home of mice and my car. Uh, so also on the IRL flying side, as you guys are probably keeping up on Twitter and that kind of thing, I'm still waiting to get my license back. Um, so I'm still waiting for the CAA to send me my paper license. And they, they've had it for just over two weeks. So, I, I've heard on the grapevine that it takes about three weeks before they process it currently. So, at some point, I'm hoping that I'll get a, a letter or I'll see some... Apparently, the first sign is you see the money disappear off your, off your credit card. Once they take payment, basically, that means it's been processed. Yeah, so if you look for that, you see the payment go and you're like, aha! And then a few days later, it should happen. You should end up with your license back. Uh, so, anyway, in the meantime, I got... I've been doing some flying in a Piper Alpha, Piper Alpha 28 Warrior, PA28 Warrior 2, as it happens. So I've now been certified to fly that. So you have to do some cross training. So that's what I've been flying. I'm not flying the Robin now, I'm flying the PA28 Warrior 2. Which I will also show you in the sim, because you can get that plane uh, in X-Plane. So I'm going to show you how to fly it in the sim. And then, as soon as I get my license back, I'm going to be going out with the GoPros and we're going to do some actual flying in the PA-28 Warrior 2, so that should be fun. Right, roads seem pretty quiet. It's a good haul of the Volvo, like it has good torque on it, but like I say, the uh, my current Transmission is the problem. The gearing is just not to my liking. Also, because the Volvo, the manual... Oh my god! Dude! <laughs> what was that? I did not expect that. Um, because the, the gearing is... Um, on the manual... On a Volvo, the manual shifter layout is different to a Scania. You know, there's no... Apparently no standards here, so... Uh, people do it however they want, so the where you, where you shift is different on this to where you shift on a Scania. And it does catch me out, because I'm very used to the Scania layout, but the Volvo layout is different. Um, so every now and again, I put it, I put the stick into position where there's actually no gear, because there is on a Scania, but not on a Volvo. But apart from that, it just takes about half an hour to get used to again. And then I'm fine with it. Is that a 70? Oh, that's a 100, that's fine. 
Okay, looks like we're gonna be getting off here and heading down routes four. Oh, one thing. Compass. Okay. Let me give you a tip. So if you've got the SISL mod pack, which is in Steam, very good mod pack, definitely worth getting. Cabin accessories from SISL. We'll add loads of accessories like Pac-Man, one of my favorites. Um, gives you a compass as well, which you can stick on the dash. Now, you might think to yourself, well, what use is a compass? Well, if you want to do a no sat nav challenge, yeah? So you're kind of figuring things out just by looking at road signs. So what you can do is look at the map beforehand, figure your route out, maybe make some notes, just as you were doing, you know, if you was doing this for real, like if you went back to the 90s or 80s or whatever, and you don't have a sat nav, what do you do? Well, generally speaking, what you do is you get the map out, figure your route, write it down, you know, turn off junction this on the M6 or whatever, uh, you'd write it down, and then as you're going along, you'd be looking at the road signs to see where you're going. And, you know, if you get lost or you think you've gone the wrong way, you pull over and you look at the map. Well, if you want to run without a sat-nav in Eurotruck for fun, and it is fun, um, that's exactly what you do. At the start of the route, look at the map, figure out your route, make some notes, off you go. But a compass, when you've got no sat-nav, a compass is very, very useful because it will tell you if you're going in the right direction because you know like if your delivery point is northwest like let's say you're in the bottom part of france or something oh my god break let's say you're in sort of south part of france and um you know you've got to go to a drop in italy then you know roughly speaking you should be going uh east and then south yeah that's pretty much where you're going to be heading so you can see on your compass if that's what's happening. If you suddenly find yourself heading north, you know you've gone the wrong way, so you better pull over and check that map again. I mean, of course, in Eurotruck, you can just bring up the map as you're driving, but if you want to play it, if you like, for real, as you would if you was a real truck driver, well, I'm sure some truck drivers do get the map and put it on their wheel um, and luck whilst they're driving, and, you know, that is a dangerous thing to do. Uh, and definitely not recommended. So, you know, the correct way of doing it is to is to find somewhere to pull over safely, stop the truck, and look at the map. That's what you should be doing. But you can do it however you want. It's up to you. It's your game. But it is quite fun to do a no sat nav challenge. And with this truck, it makes it very easy because um, that sat nav is a editable item on the uh, when you're configuring your truck and you can set it to be a couple of different things one is a sat nav one is external source which i don't i don't know if maybe i haven't checked but i'm thinking that that means if you put a file somewhere in particular maybe your favorite image of you and your dog i don't know maybe it'll pick it up and display it maybe that's what it's meant to do um but i never played with it but you can of course to have it on sat nav or make it blank. Uh, but not all trucks do that. Some trucks will come with a sat nav and you can't you can't change it. And and the SCS trucks are um, the ones that tend to do that kind of thing. But with this truck, you can choose. So yeah, that's not a mobile phone, by the way. In case you're wondering. That's a control for your trailers. But anyway, look how dark it is, and it's like half it's near midnight. And you can still see completely in colour. That's crazy. 78k's left. I can't believe the cows are still, like, around. That's just... Slightly unbelievable. The cows are just awake. Actually, I wonder how animals cope, like, anim like cows and stuff when they live this far north. I wonder what they do. That must really mess with their body clocks as well. Like, when do they actually sleep? Like, having a strange definition of night would really mess with nature. Right, route 2-3 we're on. Let's keep the pace up so we get there on time. Let's have a look. Expected seven till 
midday. Come on, ETA for oh, well early. Massively early. I need to get this truck repaired, actually. It sustained a little bit of damage in my uh, previous runs. Well, a little bit of wear and tear, and I think it had a altercation with a lamppost or something as well. I can't remember. <laughs> but it's not, as you can see on the repair thing there, it's probably got about 5%. So maybe slightly more damage, maybe up to 10. But it's not broke down so far, so it can't be that high. Also, my money now is on 900 million euros, and it's been sat there for quite a while. I did wonder if I was going to break 1 billion at some point. But it's a slow grind, it really is. What I really need to do is buy a whole load of trucks, and I need to do a load of truck management, but I can't be bothered. Like, when you've got this much money... Going around sorting out all your drivers and all your trucks, it's just, you know, and the interface doesn't really make it that easy to deal with such a large number of trucks and trailers and drivers. And there's just no incentive to do it, really. So I just let it, I think I've still got like 100 drivers. You can have loads more now. Right, 34Ks, we're almost there. So yeah, tr this uh, a carry trailer, this is the double one, you can get all kinds of things. It's got some really nice configuration options on it. Uh, definitely worth checking out. You can create some lovely old trailers with this thing. Really nice driving. It was one of the things when they brought out trailer ownership, it was one of the things that I think I said at the time, uh, is I can't wait until the mod authors get hold of this stuff and start creating really nice old trailers, and I think this is one of them. Uh, the Akeri series, they've always been pretty good trailer mods, but now you can actually own it, you know, you can really make something that you're just happy to drive around in from drop to drop. The only thing I wish is, you know, you could actually you can actually see the goods inside like just turning up and saying, oh we're taking fuel tanks, you know, or we're taking canned beans and all that actually happens is it just turns the truck around and goes, there you go, you're fully loaded you can't you can't see it it would be nice to be able to have the doors open and see what's going on but maybe that's something for the future right I can see the drop off point ahead sudden change to 50 I thought it'd be on the other side of the bridge but no there you go 1am delivery and I can still see in colour over there cargo rail now, let's hope we've got a decent drop-off point. Zoom in on that. Post bed. Right. This might just be a drive-in. Yeah, it's a drive-in. We should be okay as long as we line up properly. Should we get all the way over there? And get back. Boom! Okay, engine off. Lights off. Let's see how we did. Excelente! Trailer maneuvering bonus. <laughs> what? Urgent delivery. So that was good. Got me a nice chunk of XP. Took me towards level 93. 34 grand in the coffers. 224 litres of fuel. I'll take it. So. I hope you enjoyed that journey. Uh, don't forget, that is the Eugene truck. And the trailer on the back is a carry. Both of them are in the Steam Workshop. If you want to go and grab them. And also don't forget about the BOTB.com thing, which is uh, linked in the video description. If that's something you fancy, uh, take a look at that. If not, that's cool. Hope you enjoyed the video, guys. Take care until the next one. Happy trucking.